Jesse Burst of Smart Grid News. I'm your host and your moderator today, and we're here to talk about best practices for IT and OT convergence. And I think this may be one of the most important webinars we've done in a while because this topic, this issue, this challenge is really inevitable for today's utilities. Every utility must face up to this trend at, at some point and in some way. So today, we're going to share best practices that have been developed by some of the pioneers who blazed the trail. Now, I don't want to spend too much time myself setting the table because we've got some top experts here, and I want to get the benefit of their expertise. But I do want to underline the importance. I just said that it was inevitable for utilities. And for instance, more and more operational gear includes a big IT component that's embedded processes and onboard memory and software controls. So OT folks are, must increase their IT IQ as they go along. And likewise, IT shops are more and more being integrate their back office functions with operational technology. Maybe to update the GIS and the uh, as field asset database or to merge customer information with metering information. The point is that IT folks need to have more and more understanding on the operational side. And uh, there's certainly some technical issues, but there's some culture issues, uh, if you will, as well. Now, the operational technology folks, they may not be big computer geeks. It might not be what they train to do and want to do. And in addition, OT's got that 24 by 7, always on, must keep the lights on mentality. And likewise, IT may not know much about operational equipment. That's not what they train for, maybe, or what they're uh, interested in. And they have more of a, of a 9 to 5 culture. And I'm not saying that to denigrate IT. There's lots of IT folks and lots of overtime keeping systems up, but it still is a different expectation. And I say that you know as a nine to five guy myself, so you better not be calling me at two a.m. to tell me about an interesting story for Smart Grid News. I just I didn't sign up for that. So how do you bridge those two worlds? Uh, we've got the experts here who are going to explain just that. I'm Jesse Burst. I'm with Smart Grid News. That's the internet's oldest and largest uh, smart grid site. I'll introduce each of our speakers in a little more detail when it's their time to talk. But real quickly, we're also joined by Jeff Myers of Schneider Electric, with John Dirkman of Schneider Electric, and by Fred Fletcher of Burbank Water and Power. So this is what uh, we're going to cover today. First, definitions and drivers. What are we talking about? Why is it so important? Then we're going to talk about the process for convergence, some very straightforward steps and checklists uh, that you can use. And because we've got Schneider Electric with us, we're going to get some best practices from many utilities because they work with utilities all around the world. And then we're going to hear from Burbank Water and Power with some of the results and the lessons learned from their real world uh, application. And then at the end, we'll come back just for a couple of slides so that you are sure to walk away with the key points today. And at the very end, we'll also put up the contact information for all of us should you wish to reach out individually. So with that, I'd like to bring up our first speaker. Jeff Myers is with Schneider Electric. Uh, he works with the development teams to sort of pull things together. He's got a long career that touches on many, uh, if not most, aspects of the smart grid and a long involvement in many of our most important industry associations. So he's been giving back to the industry as well. And with that, uh, Jeff, uh, welcome and over to you. Thanks, Jesse. Thanks so much. We appreciate the excellent support of Jesse and the, and the Smart Grid News team, uh, as, as always. And thank you on behalf of my colleagues for being with us today to talk about this important topic. As Jesse mentioned, it's a current topic. ITOT convergence is, uh, is a thing you hear a lot about. A lot of people are discussing it. But we thought it might make sense to start with a couple of definitions to, to set the stage for the discussion today. So first, in terms of operational technology. That's a pretty broad category of the things the components that it takes to, to run the, the distribution system. So that includes things like breakers and reclosers, sensors, line controllers, uh, all of those things that help to operate and manage the grid. It also includes the data and the functional interfaces between those equipment, so the place where those things interoperate and intercommunicate. And I am going to submit today for, for a specific purpose that OT also includes the control room 
application, so for example, SCADA. Now, some folks might argue that, and, and, and uh, with good reason, that, that SCADA, supervisory control systems, uh, distribution management systems, OMSs, things of that sort, are really informational technology. But I have a specific purpose for including that in OT today, so just bear with me for a second. Those things then that are operational technology typically are owned uh, and also typically supported by the business. Now, it, it may not be true in every case. There may be some shops where operational technologies, especially the applications part, are managed by others, supported by others. Fred's going to give us in just a minute a kind of an interesting example of the way they're organized around that. But by and large, most of the utilities we work with, the business owns and, and supports the OT. And it is mission critical. Jesse pointed that out in his intro, that it's the kind of thing that requires 24-7 availability. Now, before we go on, I, I want to make a slight disclaimer here. We are concentrating in this definition and for this discussion today really on the grid side of OT. Certainly at the meter and beyond, there's a whole bunch more stuff, from smart meters to electric vehicles and, and all of the customer and prosumer sorts of things. But for today, that, that's what makes the topic big enough, I think. So we're, we're going to concentrate on the grid. Certainly those other things are important. They're important to Schneider Electric, one of the largest building automation suppliers in the world. But we're kind of the grid guys. So we're focused on OT as it, as it applies to the grid. So OT is that stuff that is the purview of operations technology. Most people think about it a lot. and most people in operations and most people outside the utility don't even consider it. If that is the purview of the few, then IT is exactly the opposite. IT is more pervasive than ever. So for our purposes today, those are the systems that run the enterprise, customer care and billing, things like meter data management systems, GIS, asset management, workflow, those things. So these are the data and functional interfaces between the equipment and humans that help to drive business processes, that help to run them. Typically, those systems, in contrast to the OT side, typically those systems may be owned by the business, but they are usually supported by another group. Most large utilities and medium-sized utilities even have IT shops that support information technology. So they are certainly pervasive in utilities today. The IT is bigger and more important in business processes than ever before. But most of them are not mission critical. Most of those things are enterprise business systems and 24-7 availability isn't so important. So having just spent a few minutes talking about the distinctions between them, of course the topic today is not that, but how they are coming together. And there are a number of drivers we often think uh, just as Jesse alluded, we often think of operational technology getting smarter, getting more IT-like. And that is certainly one of the biggest influencers in this discussion. Grid modernization, the smart grid, has certainly spurred growth in operations technology. And that's I kind of think of that as kind of in three dimensions. First of all, there are a bunch of new types of intelligent grid devices. Examples are, are everywhere, medium and low voltage line sensing to integrated low voltage circuit breakers today that have a, an integrated communications module in them. Things like better power electronics for bringing distributed energy resources into integration. So there's a hundred examples just on the grid side of new kinds of smart devices. There are also traditional devices that are getting smarter. So everything from substation relaying packages and reclosers and sectionalizers out on the line. Cap and regulator bank controllers are becoming smarter and capable of using remote sensing, for example, as, as a means for driving their function. So there's definitely new things and traditional things that are smarter, and also there's just more of everything. The smart grid has motivated many, many things outside the substation fence. So that's sort of one chunk of the driver for IT OT convergence. There's also the idea that IT is just continuing to grow. In my utility career, um, and I'm sure in, in the span of yours, you have seen much, much better IT systems 
consequently much more widely used. From the user experience to being more integrated in quality and quantity, IT is growing for the average utility stakeholder. And that also means our dependence on it to drive our business is growing. It's, it's basically everywhere in our daily life, from our smartphone to our, our automobile. We have become more dependent on IT. Lastly, there is an interconnectedness to operations and technology today that implies kind of an integration on a scale we really haven't experienced before. So from the standpoint of expanded functionality and better decision support, there is just a need to bring data and function together beyond the things that we have experienced. Now, that certainly implies complexity, and we're going to spend a little more time on that. And it also implies a much different level of requirement for cybersecurity. We are not going to spend much more time on that. Certainly, I don't want you to think for a second that this isn't something that we are thinking about and that you should be thinking about. But it's just such a big topic, we're going to sort of set it aside today. So don't think we don't care or aren't interested in cybersecurity, but it's almost a topic for another day. So if these two things are coming together, if there's more OT, if it's getting smarter, if there's more IT, and it's having greater influence on OT, there are implications. And the first of those, I think, is the opportunity. There are probably a hundred ways to organize the business value of a smarter grid, but one way I like to think about it is in these four categories, sort of grid efficiency, asset performance, operational awareness, reliability, and security. So I'm sure you could make an argument, but if you thought carefully, probably every single thing that you think of as the smart grid delivering fits more or less into one of those four categories. So the opportunity with better, smarter, more integrated IT and OT is to align those business drivers, your specific business drivers, First of all, with the key applications. So here's a, a set of eight examples from integrated demand response and distributed energy resource management to whole bar control for a more efficient grid, maybe self-healing, fault location, isolation, and service restoration. So those are sort of the key applications, and you can dial those in based on your business needs, and then further, look to align the kinds of IT-enhanced operational technology that enables those applications. So from inverters and line sensors to capacitor and regulator bank controllers and substation gateways, flow batteries and lithium-ion technology, along with those OT applications, things like economic dispatch and advanced distribution management and automated generation control. So that's the opportunity as the leader of your organization. Think about those business drivers and align the applications supported by that smarter OT. That's the, the chance to drive home business value from a smarter grid. Now, along with those opportunities for benefit, of course, come challenges. And I think that's the second implication of the ITOT convergence. I have kind of organized those into three pieces here. First of all, I think uh, grid complexity is definitely growing. And what that means in the main is that it will take better tools to model and monitor and manage the grid. You know, as we think about more and more and more devices, more data points, more places we can control and manage, it's going to become more difficult for humans to interact directly with the grid. And that means that advanced automation is going to be required to help us manage that complexity. Secondly, in the middle there, I think architecture is going to be even more critical. And this is a session that would, would make a lot of sense to really drill down, and we don't have time for that today. But I like to encourage our users to think about their enterprise and their real-time requirements for integration. And understand that, that those both have perhaps a set of different time horizons, a set of different bandwidth and latency requirements, and a set of uh, uh, different implications for architecture. So logically, then, we should think about architecture in the most holistic way possible, even though we may only be able to implement chunks of it the physical architecture is likely to be incremental. None of us 
get the chance to start with a clean slate. So we have legacy IT and OT. And so it's likely that we're going to have to move incrementally towards that holistic logical architecture. Lastly, I think the mindset for the human resources is probably going to have to shift a little bit. Jesse made the point earlier that how many of our operations team really understand basic IT principles or are not necessarily even basic, but advanced IT principles and things like security and integration and those kinds of things. So if we're a shop where the business has owned and supported OT in the past, then there may be an, an organizational change, a dynamic that has to shift there a bit. And certainly we'll have to think about the skill sets that cross organizational boundaries and think through the support of that OT as it explodes both in feature function intelligence and scope across the distribution system. Thanks, Jeff.